all eligible voters to play their part in the success of the forthcoming provincial and national elections. He says this is by registering to vote during the Independent Electoral Commission's final registration drive this weekend. The Independent Electoral Commission will hold the final voter registration weekend before the next national and provincial elections. The simple and easy act of becoming a registered voter is your first step towards shaping your own future and that of your country. As we celebrate 25 years of freedom and democracy, the forthcoming election is your opportunity to make your own history and to help South Africa grow towards a brighter future. Use your freedom and make your mark. If you are 18 years of age or older, take your ID book along to your nearest voting station on the 26th and 27th of January and register to vote. Your future is in your hands. Well, to take this uh, uh, call by the president a little bit further on is joining me in studio and uh, also in Durban. We start in here in the studio here um, with the ANC uh, Youth League NEC member, Ndumiso uh, Mukako. Thanks very much for joining us. Welcome. Uh, we also have the EFF Student Command President, uh, Peter Ketze. Thanks very much for joining us. Welcome to you. Uh, and uh, we're hoping to get in Durban to be joined by um, Kuleleko Slengwa, who's the national chairperson of the IFP Youth Brigade. If you can hear me, a very warm welcome to you as well. Thank all you very right. much and good afternoon to the listeners. Great, great to have you all, gentlemen. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, what we know for sure is of all the people that have registered to vote so far, the people that have least registered are the youth. All of you are responsible for the youth element of your parties and I'm going to ask you why your members have not registered to vote or your potential members have not registered to vote. Let me start with you. Uh, no, thank you very much Peter. As the ANC Youth League we are deeply concerned with the low rate of uh, young people who have registered to vote. In fact to give uh, correct figures you'll mm -hmm. find that only 16% of those who are between the age of 18 and 19 are registered to vote and only 54 percent of those who are between 20 and 29 are registered to vote and when you bring those age cohorts together they make about 17.7 million south africans who are eligible to vote which is about half so we are deeply concerned but there are a number of things that have uh, made that make young people not to register to vote the first one is that Peter, people are not struggling for anything in anyone's head, but they are struggling for prospects of a better life. So if the economic challenges we have in the country, or if the situation which we find ourselves in, and which is administered by politicians or political parties, mm. does not give those prospects of a better tomorrow, young people become demoralized to vote. So we have been speaking to young people as the ANC League from January, from last year, encouraging them to vote, saying that the ANC has indeed turned the corner. We are at a point where South Africa is back to the path of growth and renewal. And as a result, that is why you have seen that in the investment strike, which has been in the country for about four years, has come to an end. And investment is growing. It's now at about growing at about 400 percent. And it is only through when the economy grows that you are able to create jobs. So what we are looking for, we are going to look for investment, as President Ramaphosa is saying, and that investment may, must be in labor, absorb, right. absorbing we're gonna, sectors. We're going to explore the promises and so on and so forth, because at the moment what I'm concerned about, and you're concerned about, is that they haven't registered to vote. The EFF is seen by many as the youth party that uh, has attracted and, and captured the imagination of the young. But that's not translating into registration to vote. Why is that? Well, I think we're just, uh, you know, s uh, struggling with, uh, you know, the promises that the ANC have given our people. That's what made the young people to be, dist you know, distant from uh, registering to vote and taking part in the electoral process. Once you, you, have, uh, you have been sold dreams and at a later stage none of those things are delivered, young people, they, look, they lose interest around that and they end up saying, no, we can't trust politicians. So we're just suffering because of the failures of the current government. If they had delivered to young people, today we wouldn't be speaking about the figures that are huge of young people not pa participating 
participating in electoral process. And we must remember that young people ordinarily are constituting a massive percentage in South African population. Mm -hmm. And once they are not taking part of uh, you know, the democratic process, and it w then we must be concerned. Okay, let's go to Durban. You've blamed the ANC for your misfortunes. Well, come back. Uh, um, th let's go to Durban. The IFP uh, Youth Brigade, Mkuleleko, um, why aren't young people registering to vote? Is your message failing to hit home? Well, at the outset, one must recognize the fact that when we are confronted with the social economic challenges that we are in South Africa with an increase in youth unemployment, we have almost 10 million people in this country who are not working, we have an, eco an economy that is really struggling to grow. Um, and those material sustainable livelihoods of our people which are necessary for the dignity and growth of any individual are far removed from them because of the shortcomings and failures of the government. Therefore, you must then expect that people are going to be um, quite despondent and there's going to be a laissez fair attitude towards um, the political process because those in power have been a dismal failure. The promise of freedom and democracy has not translated um, into the dreams, hopes and aspirations which were promised in 1994 and at every successive election. But what we must therefore do and what we have been doing as the IFP is that despite all odds, um, have been encouraging young people in particular, but South Africans in general, um, to go out and register to vote. And Peter, the most um, important aspect of this voter registration, aside from the fact that people must get onto the voters' roll, that we are also dealing with um, address harvesting, because you know the Constitutional Court has given the deadline of November 2019 that all addresses must be up to date. And we are in that mess of the addresses situation also because the ANC at every turn has been passing people in from one ward to another at by-elections because their desperation to win um, is unmatched. And so the compromised um, voters role which we have now is our collective duty as a country to clean up, restore its integrity so that every South African, including young people, can have confidence in it. So this goes well beyond um, the challenges of young people not registering, but it also calls upon South Africans of all walks of life yeah. to actually go out this weekend, register to vote, make sure that their addresses are correct, and for all South Africans to be vigilant that people are actually registering um, where they're supposed to be registering. So this calls on political parties and civil society in the main to make sure that observers and party agents are fully on the ground so that we can safeguard the integrity of the voters' role. Right. So if we are to focus on those two streams, to encourage young people on one hand, but also South Africans on the other, it will be a big victory for our democracy because elections are not an event. Okay. Um, they are a process and voter registration is an integral part of that. And if the All voters' right. okay. role is I'm not gonna, up to I'm going to jump in there, we'll otherwise we'll never get through this conversation. But uh, one of the things that I'm seeing, and um, Kulelego is somebody that we see quite often and uh, perhaps is a face of the youth, when I look at the other political parties, perhaps except the EFF, I'm seeing mature people, older people. Is that what might be a challenge for the youth when they think, I want to vote for a party? They're not thinking of their youth league leaders. They're thinking about the men and women that are leading the party. And they're all quite mature. Look, uh, I, I, Peter, to a certain extent, I agree with you. And maybe it's important that I take an opportunity to educate my colleague here from the EFF that the issue of young people being marginalized is not only a problem of South Africa, but it is a problem of many developing nations. It's not only here in Zimbabwe, it's the same, many African countries and many other developing countries. But in reality, what you are presenting is correct. That is why, as the ANC Youth League, we have, fought, we have been fighting the leadership of the ANC to say that they can no longer avoid the issue of court quarters for young people. We've only been having quarters for, for women. We've said that the quarters for young people are inevitable unless we are going to lose legitimacy and touch with, young, with, with the majority of South Africans who are young. So that is a contributing factor. And I think Mkulegi from the IFP has captured this correctly. I'm surprised how does he capture it better than a person who comes from a, an organization that claims to be Marxist-Leninist. Because the reality of the matter is that whether the ANC promises or not, uh, that's not the issue. The issue is whether are the lives of our people able to go forward. 
and at the center of taking the lives of our people forward cannot be government alone. It must also involve the private sector, which in South Africa today controls about 67% of the South African economy. All right. Peter, so I'm young, I'm the most disaffected, I'm the most unemployed, I'm the most perhaps someone with the least amount of hope. Surely I would want to go and vote to change my circumstances. I shouldn't need to be convinced. Are you failing to get the message across that your life can only change if you vote? Well, I think, uh, you know, we have demonstrated uh, as the EFF together with the Students' Command in as far as the youth vote is concerned. I mean, it is evident we have seen it in the previous uh, uh, season of SRC elections where most of the institutions of higher learning are, you know, yeah, comprised of young people. this isn't where the most unemployed are, though, is it? No, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just yeah. trying to, to, to yeah. give you a narrative here on how young people tend to understand mm. and uh, find themselves within the confines and uh, ideological perspective of the EFF policies. And uh, we are confident, even this is our second election, general elections. We'll, we started in 2014, and many young people in this country voted the EFF, and we are confident that the number will increase uh, in these uh, general elections of 2019. So, so uh, I don't know, are we saying that uh, the people that voted in the last election are the ones that are going to vote again? Look, no, Peter, no, 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 no. I think we're see, getting it you wrong. See what happens I, is that what discourages young people to vote in many instances, it's when they are going to be led by people who do not lead with truth, like my colleague Peter here. It is not true that majority of universities in South Africa or institutional institutions are in the hands of the EFF. But it's a fact. Many, many of there, those are in the hands of SASCO and no, the PYA. We, we, they won indeed some. And just by the way, Sasko has been he there. enjoying a hegemon we're for a very long there. time, we're and they only started there. winning right. now, and their we win is noticeable. But argue. let's go to the real issues Hang now, on. why we are here So today. we're speaking about well, young Peter, people, the right? The fundamental right. point is let's this just, kind of okay. political bickering, which you have just witnessed now, mm. which is going to put young people at the periphery of the discourse, simply because we are not engaging in the fundamental issues. We sit here and we want to pick up about things. The state of the nation is very clear. The country is not growing. Corruption is on the increase. Young people do not have jobs. That's the bottom line. The government has failed to deliver. But we've got a duty to safeguard our democracy by encouraging them to actually vote and be part and parcel of the decision-making process. Secondly, the question that you ask in so far as the representation of youth, well, amongst other things is the fact that political parties, and in this case the ANC, has failed outright as the ruling party to put the collective interests of young people at the forefront. The ANC's got 249 MPs in Parliament, and not a single one of them is below the age of 35. Now, how do you expect a governing party to take young people seriously and forward if they are not represented? And it is now left to us in the opposition benches to at all times be the sounding board of government insofar as youth matters are concerned. So the ANC are the last people to speak about young people in the discourse of service delivery and governance because they have not been placed at the center of that agenda. And it is now the time, and I want to make a clarion call to all young South Africans out there to say these elections are probably more important than any other that we have had post-1994 because what is at stake is the sustainable livelihoods of our people. And at the heart of that is jobs and a growing economy. And what the ANC has not done in the past 25 years, they're not going to manage to do in the next coming 25 years. And so young people must take ownership of this discourse and be part and parcel of the electoral process by going out in their numbers to vote. At the right time, we'll debate and engage the issues. But right now, the message of every responsible leader, citizen, is that let us register to vote. Is it possible, this is for all of you, yes. that the, the reason that there's apathy is that there's a lot of young people who actually don't know who to vote because you guys haven't done your job to convince them that you have the answers. You know, I fully agree with you. And I said at the beginning of the interview, and I mm. agree with them, colleague, that to say that at the center of the youth apathy is that young people have lo are lo slowly losing faith in the legitimacy of our democratic process because it seems not to provide the prospects of a better tomorrow. So that is why the ANC, when it went to its 
it's a conference in Nazareth, one of the things we said, this, this new path of growth and renewal must be accompanied by changes in the structure of the economy such that the economy benefits the majority whom are marginalized. Because people can vote until they turn pink, but mm. if their lives do not change, if, the, if voting does not give them job, if voting does not put food on the table, they will lose legitimacy and will time, with time they will see it as a waste mm -hmm. of time. So what I'm saying, what the, 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 the point that we are making here today is that indeed we are concerned with the low number of young people who are registered to vote. What are we doing? We are speaking to young people and telling them that we have brought them President Cyril Ramaphosa who have entered a, a path of growth and renewal and that, and that growth and renewal is already starting to pay off. As I've said to you that investment in South Africa have grown and many other things are happening. We are outrooting corruption. No, it's, it's true. It's true. Unemployment, is extremely, unemployment is extremely high. And in the main, you can't solve unemployment by growing investment mm. alone. You need to change the structure of the economy. Okay. This investment must be in sectors which are labor absorptive. Peter, That's the real of the matter. EFF, very strong on land. How is that going to help the young people? Look, I think land is one of the most significant policy of the EFF. And equally, we might agree with many South Africans that without land, there's no way you're going to create employment. I mean, we have been hearing people saying there will be 5 million jobs, it has never happened. Once you have the ownership of the land, you are able to then control significant uh, sectors of such part, uh, you know, of economy, your agriculture from farming, processing and delivery. Mm -hmm. You are going to create a lot of, lot of work around that. You speak of textile industry, where you are going to be able to, you know, have uniforms of police, soldiers, nurses and everyone being done here and do away with this thing of uh, mm -hmm importing everything that is around us here. Almost every item that is in this room is coming out outside this country. And you can imagine how many jobs would be created if these things were just done in this country. Uncle Lego, I'm going to turn to you now, and, and I'm going to, this is something I'll explore with all, all of you, is when somebody mentions your party name, uh, is there something that is synonymous with your name so that people can associate with it? I think the EFF have done well in associating themselves with fighting for land. IFP, I'm not so sure that people understand what the IFP stands for, or is it I've missed the message? You might have missed the message, Peter. People definitely understand what the IFP stands for. That is why in 2011 we got two municipalities because the ANC um, sponsored the establishment of the NFP. But we corrected that and we now control 13 municipalities simply because we are able to create a message which works for the people. At the heart of it is that there's a trust deficit between those in government, political parties and the citizens. And the first thing that we have done is to establish trust and that's synonymous with the IFP. Synonymous with the IFP is leadership of integrity, service, delivery. Go to where we govern now and you will see for yourself the fact that we are able to deliver. At times even with very shoestring budgets, but we are able to extend it so that it reaches everybody. The IFP is a voice of reason in a sea of chaos. The IFP is servants of the people and the IFP is the party which at all material times has put the collective interests of our people first. And but we've has, got has credible message, solutions. Has, which has that message got to the young people? That's what I'm really trying to get at. Yes, it, yes, yes, it has. It, that is why we have seen an increase in the membership of the IFP Youth Brigade. We stand now at 1,209 branches countrywide um, of the IFP Youth Brigade. The majority of our volunteers as the IFP is young people. If you go into our membership register now, over 75% of IFP membership is young people. And on a day-to-day -day basis, we are extending our reach. We have put in our policies a minimum of 40% from 2011 of all youth representation in structures of government, mm -hmm. which led to the establishment um, of the Youth Councillors Forum, which assists the party to make sure that at local government level, we are able to speak to the collective interests of young people. So what you will not find in the IFP is a lot of noise, but you will find that we are able to provide solutions, a lot of hard work, which has actually resulted um, in service delivery for our people. As we speak now, the municipality that we govern are all delivering bursaries and registration fees to young people from um, 
previously disadvantaged and presently disadvantaged communities who are unable to access higher education because the ANC has sold everybody a dream that there's free education, whereas that's not the case. And our interventions are at the very heart of making sure that young people access um, higher education. So wherever you look, you will find that the IFP prospects um, are hinged on young people and whatever we do at local government level where we govern and whether it's at provincial legislatures or national okay. assembly, we have never shied away from actively advocating for the development of young people. All and right. the young people of this country know that and that's why we are growing on a daily. Okay, so ANC keeps coming up and it has to because you are the uh, governing party. Um, how much influence do you have in leading the elders to write the policies that are going to help the young people because again I think let's let, let me start yeah. Peter by saying that uh, I, I think uh, me and Kulega are living in two different South Africas because the truth of the matter is that the IFP is not growing and South Africans do not uh, <laughs> receive the message of the IFP well. That is why it remains a very regional party that is mainly dominant in Guazulu Natal, led by the same person from 1975 to date. The ANC Youth League or the young people in the ANC have in various times been able to influence the ANC. The ANC today is speaking of land expropriation without compensation. That is a policy which was adopted by the ANC Youth League in its 2011 conference in Kalaka. Recently, the Minister of Public Services and Administration has said that they are going to remove experience as, as, experience as a requirement for posts that are below uh, assistant director in government. That is a call that has been made by the ANC Youth League. Recently, we have been, the min Minister of Public Services again announced that from the 1st of April this year, young people will no longer be coerced to use a Z83 to apply. In fact, they will use one, they, they, will, they will go to a digital Z83. Those are calls of the ANC Youth League because we have seen those things as some of the barriers to entry for, for young people mm. to enter the job market. But those things do not create jobs. I think I agree with Peter when he says that land is extremely important, but on top of land, we must deal with how we industrialize our economy such that we are able to create jobs. In South Africa, the, the, stru uh, the structure of the economy has been changing over time from 1994. If you look at it today, for the financial and services sector is almost 22 mm. or 23% of the GDP, uh, and it far uh, uh, leads uh, manufacturing and mining sector, which were the areas which were pre predominant under apartheid in the early 1994s. So we need the correct policy. We need the land, yes. What do we do after we have the land? We must make sure that we, we pass policies that are going to industrialize yeah. the South African economy and create jobs for young people. All right. Peter, I, I, and I'm asking that question again about mm -hmm. influence. Um, the ANC Youth League has struggled quite a bit in terms of asserting its authority um, for some time now. I think that's not a secret. You have a party where you have a very strong high command, if I can use that word, um, people that have come through youth mm -hmm. league movements themselves. Do you as a youth league feel that you have power and influence to say, this is what we want? Um, you know, President, uh, 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 the Deputy President, President and, and uh, high command structures. Do you have that power or is it just another structure within the party that's nice to have and uh, you have meetings, you get t-shirts, and, and that's it. Well, I think we must clarify something. I'm not a leader of the youth. I'm yeah. the leader of the students. And, yes. you know, you can be a student too. Yeah. You are not youth. I can be your president if mm -hmm. you join my party. True. So, 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 so with that being said, yes, uh, the EFF takes its student wing very seriously. I sit in the, in the, the NEC, the CCTs of the EFF, the all councils, the most critical, I mean, the board that takes critical decisions. We are forming part of that. We, f we are from time to time getting advices from them and we also advise them on areas that they might not be you know capacitated uh, uh, in and uh, I think uh, the EFF uh, w as we know it's comprised of predominantly by mo mo more young people in its structures from regional level provincial level and the, 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 the national level so many of the issues that are surrounding you know the policy position of the EFF are pro youth because those people are, are just you young people all right. So seen. all of you are saying the right things. But again, I keep coming back to the fact that if you don't have a massive turnout this weekend to register to vote, mm -hmm. actually the young people are not hearing you. And I'm not sure why that is, because they're rather staying at home and doing something else than registering to vote. 
your youth, they come in their millions and thousands when you organize marches, but they're not going in their thousands to go and register. What is the disconnect? It can't be just... Uh, it's, it's social economics. That's the truth of the matter. People, but, but people are to engaged... But vote will change their lives. They, they must see that happening. So that is why at the center of the ANC, when it goes back to government after the May elections, we must be very decisive in how we discipline private capital in South Africa, how we deal with policies that are going to ensure that we create work. Because the patience of our people is running thin. Even that is a confession which we have in the ANC. There are many parties which are formed because people are disgruntled with some of the things we have done. People are disgruntled with our inability to meet their socio-economic needs. So you can be a party, say all the correct things, but if you do not intervene decisive in the economy of the republic, which is 67% owned by private people, and make sure that you channel those people to industries that create jobs, make sure that you channel those people to industries where the black middle class is able to afford houses and not live from mouth to hand or from depth to depth, you are not going to resolve, you are not going to legitimate. Mm -hmm. People will never see the value of voting. Mkulelego, do you think that uh, the youth understand that their vote actually matters? Yes, they do. Um, but and we must take very seriously the fact that um, there is a resistance towards um, registering to vote precisely because it may be that um, it is a protest to say that we are not participating because the system has failed us. And what we are saying is that don't allow the system to consume you to the point that you are not going to be able to progress. It's very funny that Numiso can sit there and be able to articulate all the problems of this country, but very short on solutions, whereas they've been in government for 25 years. And it's precisely what has irked young people in this country, that you've got people in government who are always speaking about the problem and have got no solutions. He then wants to um, say that the IFP has been led by one person since, it's, since it was founded. Well, maybe that's a good thing because it's given us the stability we need. Um, if you look at their own track record, they gave us the disaster of the past 10 years, which has cost this country from state capture to corruption to um, jobless growth to finally an economy that has collapsed. And worst of all, the ANC is a youth league, is a shadow of its former self. Its president is not even a young person. So even when those in government are not taken seriously within their own party, it tells you the problem that we have. But the bottom line is the appeal I make to young South Africans is that notwithstanding the problems and challenges that we have. The solution is for us to take this country back through the barrel of the ballot and the process starts with us registering to vote. If you want to change the situation of high crime, high unemployment, high levels of poverty, increasing and escalating inequality, the solution begins with us being an active citizenry as young people to go out and register to vote. So I urge all young South Africans, one young person to another, to say, let us march, to, march into the future together. Let us own our democracy. Let's do justice to the struggle of those that came before us. And most importantly, we must not sit on the sidelines. Let us be active participants and not watch on. So let's use these two days productively and make sure that between eight and five, you go to your nearest voting station, register to vote and prepare to vote for change come May 2019. Peter, how many people under 35 are in Parliament for the EFF? Well, uh, we might, let's say, how many people are over yeah. 35 <laughs> who are in Parliament for EFF? Yeah, and they, yeah. are, they are very handy. I mean, there are very few. Majority of uh, members of Parliament of the EFF are, are relatively young. And uh, it's something that we are proud of. And uh, young people can easily identify themselves within mm. the EFF. And uh, we will also like to call upon those who were born in 1995 to 2001. Those are the first uh, ever voters. So they haven't missed any opportunity. They must not, uh, you know, be like other youth that have been ignorant. Because I think it's ignorance at some point. There are those people who do not even understand why they should. They ask you, go to do, 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 do. why should I vote? What, what, what is happening? 
why should we be compelled to vote? They do not understand. I think also the IEC has has a lot to do to educate our people the, how important it is to participate in the electoral process. Back in 1994, before Mandela was voted, there were even some soapies on the very same SABC where they will they will they will educate people on how important it, it is to vote. But I suppose that uh, they don't want to do that because they know the, the 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 young people are not going to be you know voting for the ANC anymore and. Once you, you start doing such programs, you are running a risk of losing <laughs> votes. That's why they are doing that. So from 95 to 2001, those are the EFF voters. No one from oh. of that age could easily <laughs> identify themselves with any other party other than the EFF. Uh, is that true? Peter, the message is one. Young people of South Africa, tomorrow, wake up, take your ID, go to a voting stations. They open at 8 o'clock in the morning. They close at 5 p.m. The problems are there, but we must not despair because the weather is bad. Surely, after you vote the ANC in May, tomorrow will be better than today. All right. Okay, I'm going to start wrapping things up. So I'm going to start in, in Durban with you, Mkuleleko Tlengwa, National Chairperson of the IFP Youth Brigade. Your closing thoughts to young people, because tomorrow and San Sunday, that's the last opportunity that they have. What's your message to them in, in 30 seconds? I want to say to all the young people of South Africa is that we did not arrive at the moment and at the privilege of voting easily. This is a right which was fought for because at the heart of this right lies the will of the people and it, li it lies the collective interest of every South African because it is the one moment when all of us can make a decision together. And I'm saying notwithstanding our problems which have been caused by the ANC's failure to govern, let us go out and register to vote. Let us be part and parcel of the democratic project of South Africa and let us say with one clarion voice as young people that this nonsense of failing to govern ends here and goes no further. That. Let's reclaim our country come okay. May. But if you want to arrive at that moment, we need to begin by registering to vote for jobs, for growth economically, okay. for sustainable development, for honesty in leadership, for integrity, and to push back the frontiers of corruption which have consumed our government at every level. And so this vote is All a right. vote to okay. clean up the mess before us. Go Thanks. out and register to vote. Thanks very much indeed. He's taken half your time, so you've got 15 <laughs> seconds, Peter. <laughs> Look, I think uh, the message is clear. Young people should go out in their numbers and, and, and register to vote. And uh, of course, we understand their frustrations. And the EFF and its own structures is doing everything they can to make sure that young, young people in this country get a better future. We are everywhere in all campuses is trying to assist young people to have access to the education and in part of the manifesto that the commander-in-chief will give on the 2nd of February in Giant Stadium where we will be giving commitments not promises, commitments that will be done in five years. Okay. Young people will then understand very well that uh, it is important. But the one more last thing we that we... We, we, we have got time. Yes, we'll, yes. we'll get you back. We've got lots of uh, uh, months to go before the elections and finally uh, to you uh, and, uh, and to me. Peter, young people People must remember the young Solomon Kalush Matlang, who was killed exactly 40 years ago, fighting for the right to vote. So they must not miss the date, this year's election, by not voting. Tomorrow and Sunday, they must go to their voting stations. They must not be worried by political parties that are going to meet in small stadiums like the Giant Stadium, but uh, be worried about the future of South Africa. Yeah. Gentlemen, to all of you, thank you very much indeed for joining us. And uh, just a reminder that at 5 o'clock, uh, we'll be talking to uh, representatives from the youth of uh, COPE as well as the DA. And we'll also be talking to political analyst uh, Kaya Satole, who might be able to unpack some of the reasons why they haven't showed up to register and also who might stand to benefit if uh, the current uh, registration trend continues all of that still to come stay with us we're going to take a quick break in the meantime